I'm going to talk about these guitars. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, these are the guitars I use to work with. These are the guitars I use to get the job done with. And I'm going to go through some of them that you might not have heard on my YouTube. For instance, this Washburn WLO 100, I use all the time. Figure out chords, um, figure out keys for singers. It's kind of an OM shape, so it's super comfortable. It's got Fishman in there. I don't always record with it, but I use it all the time to figure out. So it's got these racial tuners. And if I do a full turn, it's basically a whole step down. And often if I know the chords I want to play and the voicings I want to play, I'll, I'll move the whole guitar to a whole different key, E flat, maybe even drop D. So great, great, useful guitar. I have a classical here and I'll record with it, but it doesn't have any electronics, so I don't take it out of the house. It's from the early 70s, belonged to my mom. And in a similar vein, this is a custom-made flamenco guitar from Spain. I bought it from my teacher. It's all spruce, which uh, is a good way to say, tell if it's a flamenco guitar, and then a cedar top. Um, I hardly use this guitar because it is so hard to keep in tune. Why? It's got these violin tuning pegs on, on the back. And uh, John Taggart, uh, Guitar Tech to the Stars. He's with Fleetwood Mac and Stevie Nicks. He actually retrofitted these for me. Uh, these are s somewhat mechanical um, and it's still hard to keep in tune. I just want to get this routed out and I have normal tuners, but nobody wants to do it. But Let's see. I tuned it up right before the video starts. Not quite here. Okay, all right, so like this Washburn, I have another Washburn, and I, I, I recommend to professional guitarists to have a guitar that you can shred on, because sometimes they want you to play a steel string line, and um, if they're familiar with their electric playing and you play fast, they want you to, to do the same thing on a steel string, and not so easy, if, if you know what I mean. So this guitar is what I use to play lines with. Um, <laughs> It's, it's based off a 1936 version of a, of a Washburn. It's, it's a great guitar and it's a period accurate as far as all the uh, bindings and the rosette and stuff. But if I was doing a line... So I, I love this guitar. Use it all the time. And I do take it out to gigs. Plus it looks great. All right, Gypsy Jazz Guitars, I have three of them. This is my favorite, and you've seen it on my YouTube channel. It's got a great bark. And it's pretty rich with the sound it throws out. Uh, it's made by Bob Hollow. And there's no truss rod in this, by the way. There, I think there's some graphic, uh, graphite dowels in here, but... Um, it's number 28. He has a Nouveau model, and I think these guitars were leading up to his uh, Nouveau model, but it's number 28, 28th one he made. He sent me this big description of why he made it, and he actually didn't want to sell this to me. He wanted to take it apart and see what the weather was doing to it. So Bob's pretty brilliant. He had made this for Romain, Roman, uh, Gypsy Jazz guitarist, to play at uh, Gypsy Jazz Northwest. And when Romain showed up, he was like, love the guitar, but 
Uh, I am sponsored with DuPont. So this guitar, there's videos of it floating around. It was just passed around at the a Django Fest Northwest Festival, and I, that's one reason why I bought it. I can hear all these brilliant players playing it, and it sounded great. Anyway, I had to talk him into selling it to me, because like I said, he wanted to see what happened to it. This is a cedar top wood. That's my favorite top for an acoustic guitar. It gives it a warmer sound. And I think this is rosewood, but some or all of this wood came from Europe, but he got it from a, an American winery. And that American winery had been open for at least 100 years old. So we know the wood's 100 years old. The front, it's somewhat striated with mineral deposits. And not that he buys into it, but that was one of the main reasons he wanted to make this guitar. Uh, it's a Stradivarius theory that that Black Forest had uh, mineral in the wood, and that's why it sounds so great. So I'm not going to play it too much because you've heard it. <laughs> Hawaiian Islands on the top. You've also heard this. I've done a video on this. This is my gigging gypsy jazz guitar made by Godan. Um, great little tip these little tuners are not obtrusive you don't have anything flying off the end and um made by dear dario by the way this guitar is great it's a great solution to um perform with because you don't know if it's gonna be a noisy environment if you can use mics if you can't use mics you might have a great sound crew but when you show up they don't have your rider they don't have your stage plot so this through an app or even through the system is great. It has two inputs and um, you can check my video out on it. Not my, my favorite to record with. I'm learning how to record. The neck is very like a Selmer McAfee. But for, for gigging, cannot beat this guitar. I spent a fortune on contact mics and pickups for these guitars and uh, the Godan solves it. This guitar you may not have seen. This is Del Arte handcrafted guitar and it it's one of the few, it's one of the first ones they made from their Chinese factory, and it is 0001. Let me bring it up here. Alan Cola sent it to me. We were doing a record with my group, the Hot Club of Las Vegas, and I like the big hole, and I love this guitar. It's not as three dimensional as the other one, so for melodies, if you just wanted a simple melody to cut through, it's very straightforward. But I use it in all my records for rhythm. It's great for rhythm and it's a nice contrast against the hollow. And if you could see these mustache bridges, they actually, the middle part comes off. And if you could see, I actually put some shims in there. I use guitar picks. Vegas is really uh, hard on guitars, acoustic guitars, especially the soundboards. Until they settle in, they shrink up and by shrinking up, they raise, it raises up and I can't get the action high enough. So I'm always raising this, uh, this bridge. And by the way, this is the biggest bridge they make. <laughs> All right, Mike Taylor, this guitar, this guitar, I couldn't afford. I got the gig with Mamma Mia and we were asked to either play a Takamini and if we didn't have one, they would accept a Taylor. And that was Benny and Bjorns from ABBA there what they asked of guitar players. Some guitar players were smarter than I and they actually said, well then cool, buy me one and put it on the tour, we'll play it. I was like, oh shoot, I can't afford this. And uh, Jim McIntosh, the other guitarist with me in uh, Mamma Mia here in Las Vegas, actually called Taylor and we got an endorsement prize. So, needs new strings, but this guitar, is so great it's so great that it actually doesn't play well with others I will use this all the time in recording when I need to uh, make this guitar pop out uh, for instance if I know I'm gonna be part of an orchestra in the recording this guitar will pop out but if it's a small combo and the mix all you all this it just doesn't blend in it just it just is like me, 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 me. So I have to use this guitar sparingly, but it, it is one of my favorite guitars. By 
the way, uh, it's got the Neve preamps, and uh, it's a 714 CE. Bob Bourbonis, our artist rep, uh, I told him, I asked him to pick it out for me. It's got a cedar top, but it's got the koa on the rosette, a koa rosette, and that's uh, a nod to the Hawaiian in me. But this guitar is the bomb.